Live. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sunday. Hope all is well. And um, hopefully we can get through our review of General Conference. Saturday session. Saturday session. With first, Val. First Saturday session. Um, and we're coming live for those that have just started watching us. We're based in Sydney, Australia. Yes. So we had to wake up early to be able to watch conference, but what a blessing it was. So look, when we get into what we're gonna, what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna share with you our thoughts from general conference from the first session. And, you know, as we share this with you, if you haven't already, if you haven't already, like make sure you watch general conference. We're actually, we're 20 minutes away from the next session. So we're gonna make sure this is brief, but powerful. Yeah. And we're just gonna have a conversation and we'll love to hear what you guys also have learned during general conference. Now, we're probably not speaking as loud as we usually are because our kids are sleeping. Yeah. And we... Three out of four are sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Three out of four. So one's awake. Hopefully we can get through this. Yeah. So, how so, was it? <laughs> it was <laughs> good. Cool. Cool. Wait, you were excited for this one, eh? I was so excited. I am so excited. I've been excited. <laughs> yeah, you have. I've, I've, always, I've always looked forward to general conference. Really? Yeah, I've always looked forward to. General. I always use general conference as, um, a, like a point of pause mm. to stop and reflect where I'm at spiritually, mm. um, and then like you know refine any goals that I have spiritually. So it's it's, it's kind of like and it's the, the same goals, guys. Like it's nothing grand. Yeah, but so when you said that, it kind of reminds me of like uh, you know January. Yeah. That's like January is like the set, start of a new year, so you set yeah. goals. You got April, then you got October, yeah, and you got January. Yeah, so, so I feel like I use April and October as my reset, as my reset for spirit. Awesome. Yeah, reassess, reevaluate. So what was there was a lot of things that we've taken away. And I don't know about you, but for me, I just felt like you know I'm laying in. I'm just I'm writing down things. Sometimes I, I write down what they say, but sometimes I just write down thoughts that come into my mind. I think those are the thoughts that you need to write down. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that's what the spirits prompting you. Prompting you. Feel, you know? So it's not a matter of what they're saying; it's a matter of what. What are you hearing? What are you hearing? What are you hearing from what they're saying? Well, what, what are you smiling for? God's present announcement there. <laughs> Hashtag him. <laughs> I, th I think we're like twins in the in the past, all right, honestly. Exactly, because my husband and wife. Yeah, man, I saw, I heard that. I heard that. You know, the, the opening remarks. Like, what what does it mean to you when he says when he had that introduction and oh, he gave the invitation well before the yeah. general conference, but in his opening remarks, if you haven't already, please watch it, man. It's oh. Church site kept crashing, so go on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, go YouTube. YouTube. Um. But 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 like, what comes to mind when when he says he him like what? And, and I think this is, this is why people need to watch the conference for themselves because they're going to interpret uh, different meanings to that word or to that saying. Mm. You know what I mean? So what, what was your intake on that? Well, I think like just before, even like when he has said hear him, like when he's come out and he said that, um, I just feel like throughout the scriptures, who is speaking, the Saviour speaks. Yeah. Rarely does Heavenly Father speak, I feel. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, that Heavenly Father is giving us that so You mean, you mean say, the Saviour speaks on behalf of Heavenly Father? Yeah. But usually it's just it's the, the Saviour speaking. communicates to the prophets. Yeah. Yeah. But I just feel like, you know, Heavenly Father really, really has extended that invitation towards us. So... You know, if, if it's coming from him, then, you know, we better sit down and listen, <laughs> try to yeah. hear him. But I think it's also important, um, you know, how, how do we hear him? You know? But for you as a mom right now, like in your current situation, four kids, under the age of five, you know, we're, how old are you, 30, 30 years old, we're still a young couple. You know, what are you hearing for you as a mom at this time? Because I think it's very important you know, to relate mm. to where you are right now. I think it's what, like, how can I improve? How can I improve? 
you know, what, what is it? When what, like going into se- going into the session, I'm like, okay, what is it that you want me to learn? What is it that you want me to work on? What is it that you want me to improve? You know, what is it that you want me to keep strengthening? Do you know? Yeah, give us just just one example. <laughs> Share some of your spiritual. Yeah, so then, so one of the talks that stood out to me was from um, Sister Joy D. Jones. Women's Society President. Primary. Primary President? Primary President. Oh, yeah. And how she spoke about how she spoke about um, how we as women have a special, how we have a part as well, you know, in the ongoing restoration that we need to continue. That was like a, I feel like that was like a motivational speech. <laughs> that was like a, you know, um, what is it, Russell call it? Um, in, the, in the Book of Mormon, with the title liberty, like title liberty. liberty yeah. yeah, like this is the title liberty for, 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 for mums. Like this is, yes, this is like, yes, the, the priesthood is there, but like, and, and one thing that I, I don't want to take this away from you, but one thing that I did write down from what she said was, um, it's impossible to see how mothers are able to impact those around them. Mm. I think that's how mothers feel. That is how mothers feel. You don't really, you don't really know the effects. The effects. And you probably won't see probably it to the full capacity it. or yeah. comprehend. Yeah, and I feel like it's the same. Why? Thing. But why do you think it's mothers? Like, why do you think mothers have that power? Because we're designed that way. <laughs> we're just designed like, like that. Like priesthood holders, there. It's we're... in, it's in, it's in our makeup. Like I just feel like Heavenly Father just designed us to be that way. Yeah. Um. You think about like the sisters of the church. We belong to the organization of Relief Society. So we, as sisters, provide to relief, relief to the to the ward. Yeah. To, to the, the family. To, to the, the families, ward. The members. To you know, to everyone. So. I think just something that came to mind, like she spoke about um, how the prophet Jesus said, you know, live up to your privileges. And she spoke about, um, yeah, just how we have to continue to receive revelation. And just something that stood out to me that kind of came to me is, you know, we have three girls and one son. And I just kind of thought like, um, as a mom, I am raising and nurturing future mothers in Zion. I'm also raising a future priesthood holder and a future missionary. So in order for me to be able to best do that to best serve our kids, I need to continue to receive revelation. And in order to receive revelation, I have to do the things yeah. The things. Prayer, but not just prayer, like, you know, intentional prayer. Pray in faith. Pray in faith, yeah. Pray, that was the, praying in faith, you know. That was the that was so, a bit, that was a very common thing that um that came up. Yeah, so that's I think that's something that stood out to me. Yeah, you know, and I really want to touch on that. I really feel like, you know, it, it just you know, when I heard her speak, I just felt like this was like this is a great opportunity. You know, she, one of the things that she said that you said was, or that she said, was that there is a restoration happening right now and the restoration, okay. it's ongoing, but more importantly, the part that a mother plays in the restoration, because you think about it, right? Our prophet, Russell Nelson, is conceived by his mom. Yeah. Right? The, all the apostles right now, we see them, you know, speaking, it's a great opportunity. Ah! Okay, two awake out of four. But, um, oh, here we go. They're all awake now. Hello, Lola. Good mm-hmm. morning, baby. Hello. Yeah, so I really feel like, you know, it was, it, it's so true when, when, when they said that. Um, Don't mind my onesie. <laughs> it, it was so true when, when, when she said that there is ongoing restoration right now within families. Yeah. yeah. And it's so true. Like, the mum is truly. The, the heart of the home. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. Mm. I think, I think, yeah, I definitely, I, I just want to share my insights in regards to, you know, when, when he's, I, that was one thing that stood out to me, like he, I really felt like um, 
it, it comes back to the responsibility that we have as fathers, mothers, and even if you know you're a single parent or yeah. an individual, it comes to that back to the responsibility that. Or even if you don't have kids, you, like you, kids, you yeah. still play a role. You still play a massive role because yeah. you can give relief to someone, uh, your friends, yes, yeah, family, within your family. Nephews. But but yeah. when he said he him, I really felt the. Um, I really felt the importance of receiving personal revelation. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. The importance of, and that's what, like, that's what was spoken in the first session. Um, who was talking about this? Um, Henry B. Iron spoke about it. Yeah. Oh, yes, he so Henry B. Iron spoke about prayer and, you know, he prayed through faith and through faith, he was able to receive an answer mm. to restore the church. And I feel like that's a common pattern. He said this, he goes, um, prayer of faith is a gateway to revelation. Practice the same pattern that Joseph Smith mm. applied. Yeah. And then one of the things that he studied, because we we uh, we actually go live with the Come Follow Me La last week, he goes that Enos is a great mentor mm. about the power of, of prayer. prayer. No, we spoke about. And we that. spoke about. If, I think we, yeah, we recorded it. Yeah, yeah, if you if you watch our uh, go back to. Two, three, four episodes. I think it was the last episode, but we spoke about how um, every time we come across Enos, like he's known for. He set that bench bar. Yeah, he's but he's known for praying all day, all night. You know, and every time we come across and read Enos, we can't help but feel like our prayers need to like improve like tenfold. tenfold yeah. You know, so um, I like how he said that, like. And I wrote down like Enos, my prayer mentor. I feel like he always rebukes me about prayer every time I read him. And I think I've, I've, you know, since studying Come Follow Me in preparation to the general conference, like I've really felt the importance of receiving personal revelation. And it's very, it's, it's such a simple pattern, mm. right? It's simple. It's like desire, have a desire to know yeah. and understand, you know, the Heavenly Father is there to help us. Yeah. And it's having a desire and then asking you with faith. Yeah. And then listening and hearing it. Mm. And then what was the thing that we spoke about in Come Follow Me? Apply. Application. 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 And remember in, in like, the Bible dictionary, if you look, if you look up prayer, it talks about how prayer is a form of work. And just like Enos, like after he prayed, he got up and he went and he preached to the people like so mm. he went straight to work like for the very things that he was praying about he went and did his part he went and worked so yeah what, what a relief it was to be able to hear him speak about a little bit about it but he spoke about like what's going on right now with the coronavirus and that mm. and, and one of the things that he said was one of the things that that helped me and, and, I, and i really felt this as we've applied come follow me he said <laughs> Um, how can we, we withstand trials, not just the trial of the coronavirus, mm. but any other trial, mm. physical trial, you know, death, trauma, um, you know, trials within our family. And he said the importance of preparing, preparation, mm. but personal, spiritual, uh, prepare us, personal, spiritual storehouse. Mm. Like be, be prepared spiritually. So for one time that this happened, mm. you're able to face it with faith. Yeah. But you have spiritual strength to call upon. You have a solid foundation to fall mm. back onto. You know what I mean? But you can't fall back on anything if it's not there already. That's right. You know, when the time comes to use, yeah. the time for preparation has already passed. It's like it's like with the welfare, you know, the church has been saying for years. Since we're better, babies, man. We used to have crackers and you know, we used to have just like all these food stores, big buckets Gunny. of water, and, and yeah. for years, you know, we never really needed it. Toilet paper, <laughs> toilet paper was, you know, it was such a, it was something that we just overseen. But right now, in time of anniversary, you're you're like, man, if only we prepared earlier. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, I just want to end on one thing. Um, I loved, I loved um, out of out of Ballard's talk, President Ballard. Yep. Talk um, where he spoke about, you know, he spoke about the prophet Joseph, but then he also spoke about 
his brother Hiram. Mm. And you know how I feel about Hiram. Yeah. Um, but I just want to um, just share this. Um, and this is found in DNC, uh, DNC section 135, verse 3. It goes, Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more, save Jesus only for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. Wow. In the spe short space of 20 years, he has brought forth the Book of Mormon, which he translated by the gift and power of God, and has been the means of publishing it on two continents, has sent the fullness of the everlasting gospel, which it contained to the four quarters of the earth, has brought forth the revelations and commandments which compose this book of doctrine and covenants and many other wise documents and instructions for the benefit of the children of men gathered many thousands of latter-day saints, founded a great city, and left a fame and name that cannot be slain. He lived great and he died great in the eyes of God and his people. And like most of the Lord's anointed in ancient times, has sealed his mission and his works with his blood. And so has his brother Hiram. In life they were not divided and in death they were not separated. They lived for glory, they died for glory, and glory is their eternal reward. From age to age shall their names go down to posterity as gems for the sanctified. Um, I love that. Mm. I really love that. Like, and I really love how it speaks of the prophet Joseph and it says that, you know, he's done more, save Christ only for the salvation of men in this world. Um, and that came, guys, like that just came about from a prayer of faith. Wow, yeah. Like, do we understand, the like, how yeah, the power of prayer, mm -hmm. the power of asking, the power of knocking? Like, do we understand how much power lies within that? I mean, that's something that I definitely need to um, improve on. But, you know, I, I love the prophet Joseph, but I also love his brother Hiram. Um, and I grew such a deep love for him, like, when I served in Liberty Jail, and to know that his brother was there with him like the whole way you know like the prophet was incarcerated in liberty jail but so was Hiram. He, he was he was there every step of the he way was, he, he was there every step of the way remember that uh, he mentioned that there was an opportunity uh just to to him yeah. brother and told him to to leave a week before they were going to, to Carthage. To Carthage. Oh, yeah. and he's like no no nah. So, you know, I really admire him. Like, I have such a deep love and respect for him. Yeah. He's not, he's, he's not glorified. Typically, yeah, he's not typically spoken of. And not that you do it for glory. Yeah, not but, glorified, but more um, acknowledged. He, acknowledged, yeah. He's not as acknowledged as much, but, you know, I love, I love that. But um, that is... First session of conference. First now. session of... Look, we started with no one, and this is the reality... Of it. Now we're eating paper. So look guys, man, please, if you haven't already, like, make sure you watch it. We're, we're five minutes away from the next session and we're going to watch that one and we're going to also go live again and share with you our thoughts. Yeah, so make sure you like. Make sure you like and subscribe and share, but you know what, make sure you comment below and share. If there's something that you've learned from us or maybe as we've shared with you our thoughts, Maybe maybe something that's come yeah, online. please, man, comment that below and we'd love to learn from you guys and hear what your insights and uh, insights from General Conference, session one, survey session. Mm -hmm.